Looking to showcase your product or service? There's no better place than the AFCA convention, which will take place January 8th through the 10th in 2023 in Charlotte, North Carolina. The AFCA convention is an opportunity to exhibit in front of over 7,000 coaches and staff members. Head on over to convention.afca.com for more information. See you in Charlotte. This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Kansas Wesleyan's new head coach and the 2021 AFCA's NAIA Assistant Coach of the Year, Coach Matt Myers. Coach Myers talks about the new transition to head coach, the pressures of maintaining a successful program as an alum, and the impact the AFCA has had on his journey. Now, let's get Inside the Headset with Coach Myers. Coach Myers, thanks so much for joining us. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for having me. All right, man. Well, I, I, sh- I sure appreciate you hopping on. I know uh, it's that time of the year where you're trying to finish up the 22 class and, 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 and taking a peek at some of the 23 guys you might have saw on the road here. So uh, hopefully hopefully the summer is treating you guys well. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, the, the weather's been nice. We've, uh, you know, we're getting everything we need to get done uh, here in, in May, just ended. So June, we're going to start ramping up with, you know, getting ready for August. Really, to be honest with you, and you know, get get that stuff ironed out, and you know, feel good about going into July, and hopefully get a little bit of time to relax there uh, around that July fourth. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. It's harder and harder to find some time to relax. You know, it's, the longer you've yeah. been in the career, it's just. I mean, I, I stepped out about seven years ago, and I mean. Now with some of the recruiting calendars and, and camps and this and that, I mean, it's just hard to find a window just to relax, huh? Yeah, you're uh, you're always doing something, right. especially at this level. You're always there's always something to do for sure. <laughs> well, um, yeah, let's talk real quick. You recently took over, um, you know, for Meyer Hendrickson. Who, he, he's another young head coach there at Kansas Wesleyan. You know, uh, what advice did he have for you when you kind of took the reins of the program in December? Just been a young guy taking over a program. Yeah. Um, Coach Hen left, um, you know, he got, he applied for a job last, at the end of last fall and, uh, and he got it. Uh, and I, you know, I think he's going to have a lot of success up there at Western where his dad, his dad had coached actually previously. But when he left, I mean, I've, I've known Myers for a long, long time. He actually GA'd here when I was playing football here. So, I, um, you know, the, it's, it wasn't really a goodbye because, you know, I, I talked to him quite often actually. I mean, he was, he was still living here in Salina. So I helped him move a little bit. Move a few things here this fall. Right. I mean, sorry. This, um, so really, I mean, if I ever need anything, I you know, he's one phone call away. Just like the last, the guy before him, Coach Drinkle. Yeah. Um, I, I get to call those guys all the time, and you know, if I have a question, I can get answered, you know, very quickly. That's awesome, man. I, I, I you know, Coach Drinkle has that actually been one of the really really special guy for me um he, he was one, a part of our first like 35 under 35 class he, at that time he was the head coach of kansas wesleyan so i've been able to work with him a ton and and, and just the amount of success that has went on well, honestly since you've joined the staff and, and you know, since drink all was there uh you know you posted a 61 and 11 record which uh you know with a ton of success is a lot of fun but also a ton of pressure um you know what, what are some of the things that you want to keep consistent in a program, like you said, just rolling through a couple different head coaches, and now you know the ball's in your in your court. You know what are some of the things you want to keep consistent? Yeah, well, the consistency is, I and mean, that's the key. So a lot of the foundational pieces that uh, Coach Wrinkle implemented here in fourteen and fifteen. Yeah. When we first got here, um, I mean, I, I've helped. I've been a part of running those systems and protocols and stuff that we do. At, you know on a week to week basis throughout the year and different times of the year. So a lot of that, you know, I, I'm not going to change. Um, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a super brilliant man. I don't have, uh, you know, these very grandiose ideas about how, you know, how stuff should operate. Uh, I think the, you know, all that, that the foundational pieces that, that are in place that, that I've had the experience to, to help run as a, as an assistant here, um, all that's going to stay the same, you know, really the, the only thing that, you know, I could I could see changing for me personally is is I want to get out of the out of the coordinator role. So you know, Coach Wrinkle called the offense here. Uh, right. Coach Hen called the offense here. You know, I don't see myself calling the defense here. I'd like to get out of that role and be you know more of a more of a CEO of the team, at, like a real head coach, instead of trying to you know coordinate and call plays um, you know in games. I think that'll be that's something that that me personally, I, you know. I'm not saying that I couldn't do it. I think it would just, it, you know, take some, uh, take some of that preparation and stress off of me. Yeah. And I'm going to give it to my assistant coaches. 
uh, you know, that I can, you know, I can help facilitate, you know, their needs a little bit better um, just for me personally. That I think that'll be a big difference. But everything else, you know, you got to be adaptable, you know, different classes, you know, depending on, depending on what your team looks like, obviously we got to change a few things up, practice times, you know, but, you know, how we're doing lifting. I mean, we just went through two years of, um, of COVID, you know, protocols. So that was obviously, you know, a huge difference, but everything else. I mean, I think that, I think what coach Wrinkle did here and what he built, um, you know, I just get the honor of, you know, continued success as long as I don't, you know, make any, <laughs> I mistakes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Now, let, let me ask you this question because, you know, this is uh, it's, this is always kind of unique as I sit here and I talk to head coaches that um, e- either are or aren't involved in one side of the ball or not. You know, I, I've, I've talked to, you know, a good amount of head coaches, and it is about 50-50 in terms of their, their involvement on, on the offensive or defensive play calling. How do you, you know, or, you know, once you get to that point, I don't know when this, when, when, when you're going to make that transition, but how do you get the guy that's, that, that, that you trust? Because I know at some point, regardless, you, you pull yourself where you're still going to kind of be peeking down there. You're still going to have some expectations. You're still going to want some things that maybe look like it was when, when you were running it. You know, how do you find the right guy for that? Yeah, that's uh, – so what I, so what I did when I got the job, um, I hired James Bauer, who was – you know, he was an offensive coordinator in conference. I, I coached against him the last four years. Um, so he had a spring to come in and, um, you know, install his offense. I got, actually, I got him with Coach Sprinkle, um, you know, so he could help fill a few gaps for him, uh, scheme wise. And, uh, you know, I, I feel really comfortable with what he's doing. Um, I promoted, uh, Coach Leonard, David Leonard, who's on staff with us, uh, to a defensive coordinator position. And, you know, the, the assistance that I have that's going to, that's going to help Coach Leonard out on the defensive side of the ball, a couple of them played here and then, um, we got a couple guys that, that coach with us that are, um, they're, they're part-time guys in, in the fall, but they've been coaching. They have a, they have a ton of experience. They were high school coaches for, you know, 20 plus years. Um, you know, they have head coaching experience. So one of them is on coaches, the O line and one of them is our D line coach. So those guys have a lot of experience. Um, and then the rest of it, you know, the rest of the assistants, a lot of them play here. So a lot of them already know, you know, how we operate, what we do, why we do it, more importantly. Um, and so I get to, I get to, you know, Coach Leonard gets to go work with those guys every day and me. But if I get pulled away, like they, in my opinion, and, and I, I think what I experienced this spring is they, like, they understand what, you know, what I expect out of them, what we expect out of the defense. And Coach Leonard got to work with me, you know, every day last fall. Right. Um, so, you know, going into it, you know, I don't know when that transition happens. I like to do it sooner than later. Um, but it's one of those things like, you know, you also don't want to, uh, you know, like you say, like you're looking down the side or asking too many questions or micromanaging. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to, <laughs> it's easy to say, I, I know what you're saying. It's easy to say you're not going to do that. Right. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, I think if we, if we, if we structure practice well enough and we get enough. Um, you know, we, if I allow them to call plays in practice, which we did this spring a bunch, we did, um, you know, we got off the script a little bit and let them call yeah. plays all back and forth, um, in different periods. So I, I think if we get enough experience doing that, you know, we can, I, I, I can go into games feeling super comfortable letting, right. letting those guys do their job, yeah. which is obviously it's not always that easy to right. do, but that's, that's my dream. That's what I want to get. <laughs> Yeah, that's where you're hopeful it, it, it ends up at. And yeah, yeah, that's that's um you know, one of those things you kinda gotta get a f- feel for it, I'm assuming in, in the season and, and and at some point you'll be comfortable with it. Now, uh one of the things I, I thought was very interesting, anytime we have a head coach on that has the has had the current opportunity to be uh, an alum at their place that they're coaching at, I always love asking this question. Uh, because it you know, everybody gives a, a slightly different answer, but uh it does kind of circle up to and kind of been the same thing. Now you're the first KWU alum to lead the program since 1948. I don't know if you knew that or not, uh, but you know, our GAs was able to find that, so I think that's pretty cool. What what you know what 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 is that pressure that comes with that? I mean, you know, maybe not outside, but but within yourself. You know, you, you yeah. go out, you go out there. I mean, it's the same locker room you dressed up in, the same field you ran on. Uh, you know, years ago. So what what pressures come with that? Yeah, there's, I'm honestly, the number one question I get is how, you know, how good are you going to be? Like, are you guys going to be really good still? You know, like, is that, are you guys going to keep winning all of your games? And that, you know, it's very hard. It's difficult to win all your games. You know, I mean, it's, it's just not, it's, 
so hard to do that. And we've had so much success, you know, recently. I think that for me personally, like the, the pressure will be to, you know, maintain the standard of what we do. So like yeah. uh, the processes and protocols, everything that I, that I thought I was talking about that I'm going to keep in place. As long, in my, as long as we keep that, um, you know, up to standard and I, you know, there's no, I think if I start looking at the, at, you know, the results too much or I'm thinking down the road of like, yeah. what, you know, what if we don't do this? Like, what if we don't go to the playoffs? Like, is, you know, then, you know, I think we lose sight of what really matters, which is, you know, like what got us, what, what got us to the point of having so much success in the first place. Yeah. And I, and I go back to, you know, the, the stuff that Coach Rico drove home when I, you know, when I was playing, which was, you know, it's, it's, the culture is very simple. It's decisions you make and the actions you take, right? So it's, you know, like, let's break it down to like, what decisions are we making daily? What's the coaching staff, the players, what are they doing to make sure that, you know, we are in the best position possible, but, you know, eligibility wise, you talk about academics and grades and make sure everything, everyone's doing, you know, everything they can right all the time, which is, you know, so many different facets you can talk about like like that. So it's, you know, doing right by your teammates and making sure that, you know, when we go into games, like we have, you know, like we're healthy, you know, we, all of our guys are eligible. You know, we've done everything that we can up to the point where, you know, you walk onto the field and, you know, actually execute, you know, the game plan. Um, I just, in my opinion, I don't want to lose sight of, uh, I don't want to think about results over, you know, I process. Yeah, right. That's, right. That's, I think that's where I'm at with it because it's, you know, trying to guarantee conference championships and, you know, going undefeated and stuff like that. Like, I, for me personally, just so I can sleep at night, I, I need to break it down in my mind. Like, okay, that stuff, it doesn't matter. Right. You know, win or lose, it, you know, obviously there, you're, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, there no is, doubt. We break it down into, you know, smaller bite sized chunks. Like, you know, I'll be fine. The staff will be fine. And, the, and then the players don't have to, you know, I, I can handle a little bit of pressure, right? But if I don't want the players or the staff to be like, oh, man, like, what if we lose a game? Then what happens? Like, or, you know, are right. we failure? Like, that's not... You know, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's a, hard, that's a hard way to live. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt, man. I, you know, one of the things you you were kind of yeah, talking about that there was interesting is, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking at your your young guy, so I'm just imagining you're still probably around some some of your former players. You you talk to them on social media or something. Uh, former teammates, excuse me. You talk to them on social media and, and hey, call, you're going to be undefeated this year. Yada, yada, you know, all those kind of things that I'm sure you hear and. You know, as I, you know, I played here at Baylor, gotten, you know, coached for a long time, and then now I'm back in Waco because that's where the association is is located at. And so, I, you know, I run into guys in there. Man, what do you think about, you know, Baylor versus what you call it this week? And then I I talked to them from a football coaching perspective. Ah, you know, I don't know, man. You know, this this team's probably you know, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Man, we're, you know, we're going to go undefeated. I'm like, it's, it's not that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. There's a process that goes into it. It's, it's a ton of things that go into all this stuff. And so I know it's probably hard to maybe – you know, fun to have those conversations with your former teammates, but also a little, a little difficult for them to completely understand that process part of it. They just want the result yeah. part. <laughs> and you know, and you know how, alum, especially football alumni, you know, like yeah. they're like that. Those teams that really built, that helped build this program up, 15, 16, 17, like those were undefeated teams. Yeah. Um, but it led into those 18, 19 years where we ran the table and, you know, it just had really, really good successful teams. And so the expectation, but the expectations are still there. Absolutely. Um, so for the outside, outside looking in, yeah, they're all about, right. you know, they want results. And I want, you know, I expect results too, but I think that the, uh, the break, the, how you get there is, right. I think is what's important. So then, you know, like, let's say you do have an, I don't know, what if you go eight and three? Like, yeah. God forbid you go eight and three or whatever, <laughs> which we had done in uh, 17, I think, right? Eight yeah. and three. So we lost a few games. Well, okay, like what, you know, what do we need to change? What do we need to switch up? Like, you know, you're not that far off. Like, you know, you just got to, you know, tweak it a little bit, right. you know, no to, to get where you want to be. Amen. Well, you know, one question I do have for you here, you know, you you just wrapped up your first spring as, as the head coach. Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure you, you've been a part of tons of springs, especially right there on that same field. What was some of the takeaways that you, you took from a first-time head coach, you know, that – Hey man, I really like the way we did this. 
didn't like this so much. This was something I wasn't expecting. What were some of those things that you kind of walked away from that made you scratch your head a little bit? Right. Um, so w- this spring was, it was unique because it was our first spring in three years. Yeah. Because right? COVID, we had to have it. So I kind of, I had to go back, I had to go back three years ago just to remind myself, like, right. you know, pr- like pr- spring ball, practice times, you know, meetings, like what, you know, can, I had to go figure out, like, like remind myself, the staff, like, hey, this is how a spring works. We yeah. just hadn't done it for so long. Uh, but really, the, the takeaways for me, like, you know, when I'm sitting with the offensive and defensive coordinator, we're, you know, we're setting up practice with the staff. Um, I, I had to really, like, when you go out there, like, I want everything done, like, on time, right? Like, efficiency is key. I don't want to be out there kicking rocks for an extra 45 minutes because our transitions are slow. You know, like, we're not, it's not a professional grade practice. Yeah. So when I, so when I go out there, um, you know, keep like being the head coach, everyone, obviously, you know, you, you're setting the tone and the, the tempo and speed of practice. So if you're not running everywhere and, you know, making sure everything's very crisp, you get that to the practice. I'm like, man, we're, you know, we're 12 minutes over time. Like what happened, what happened to the practice plan that we had that was supposed to end at whatever, 545 and now it's 602. Right. I'm like, this is. So some of it was, um, it was just kind of, yeah. it was the facil- facilitating practice in a way that I hadn't had to do before. Yeah. Um, and then explaining to the coaches and the players that if we're seven minutes late, it's because we weren't, you know, the intensity level wasn't high enough. We weren't transitioning fast enough. We weren't getting in and out of, uh, you know, our team period quickly enough. Uh, so really really making it matter to them like hey like you know the earlier you get out of here the quicker you get to dinner the quicker i get to go home and see the kids we get to cut up the film and look at it all that stuff um really just show like really showing them that like the way you practice matters and it matters all the time uh and that's you know that was i kind of i was as we went through and we only had 14 practices in one spring game and then Mm -hmm. the spring game so it did it took me a couple and i was like i just had to start talking to them about you know importance of this being you know super efficient so you know we can you can go and live your lives after football practice not be out there for yeah. you know a long Oh, I appreciate you sharing that, and I, I say this, you know, the, the the purpose of the podcast is, you know, to, to to dig into, you know, coaches' journeys, and you know, hopefully people can take something away from that. And I tell you one thing that, you know, I coached for a while, and I'm sure a lot, you know, as a lot of these listeners have coached uh, for a while, it, if you hadn't sat in a head coaching role, it's probably not something you think too much about, you know, <laughs> the, the, the yeah. wasted 10 seconds from transitioning, you know, because you walked instead of ran or jogged or you know, because you talked a little too much on making a correction after this play, you just all this little thing how it adds up. Um, that, that's just really interesting. So I, I, I do appreciate you sharing that perspective. Now, um, you were named the AFCA NAI Assistant Coach of the Year for the year 2021. So congratulations on that. That's awesome. Uh, I, I think these awards are super special because uh, – these are voted on by your peers. So somebody lined up across you and said, man, you know what, That's that's that, that was a tough defense, or he does a great job. So, uh, like I said, congrats on that. What does that reward uh, award excuse me, mean to you, and what has the organization of the AFCA meant to you over the years? Um, I mean, the, uh, it means a lot, honestly. Like, I didn't I didn't even know they gave awards, like, when I started coaching. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. Right. Um, and then, um, you know, I, they – I don't know. You just get, <laughs> it's, it's very humbling, right? Cause like, I don't, you know, I'm a young guy, not, I don't have a ton of experience. Uh, right. Like we're, I was in a spot last year, going into last year, we had, we had some coaching turnovers, you know, in the summertime, a couple of our, my assistants got, um, got, got some new gigs, uh, to go and be coordinators and stuff like that. Um, and so, we, you know, we rolled into last fall and I was, you know, I was, I was, kind of retraining staff as we went into the fall, uh, which, which really helped me. I, I, I spent all of July, um, basically, you know, simplifying our playbook, making sure that when we went into fall camp, I could, you know, my, the staff that we, that we had hired in July, the, the two guys that were going to help me on defense, uh, you know, knew what they were doing and I didn't have to, you know, you know, they spend a lot of time with them doing it. So we, I really did. I, I took time to, basically take stuff out of the 
our defensive playbook that we just don't need or use. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then that the AFCA, like I love the I love going to AFCA uh, conference. It's it's always been really fun for me since I started going with uh, Coach Sprinkle. And when we went to go, when I went and got that award, man, there were some heavy hitters in that room. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, I like it was there were some dudes there, and I uh, I took actually I took Coach Sprinkle with me. He was you know I took him to go like do the dinner and and hang out or whatever. Um, because you know, he he gave me my he gave me my start right. He, he was my he was my head coach when I played here at K Dub, and then he he gave me the you know the opportunity to be an assistant coach. Um, you know, like I said, like like everything we do here is you know it, it may not be the exact way it was done in 2014 2015, uh, but it's there's you know there's remnants of Matt Drinkle all over this place. All you know his handprint is still on this program. Yeah. Um, and so it was special just for me, just to like, I don't know, as like a thank you kind of just to take him with me. Right. And I was the only one that brought a guest, uh, which was interesting. I was like, oh, I figured everyone would bring a plus one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Drinkle and I showed up and, you know, got to eat dinner and listen to, you know, Coach Fitzgerald talk to us. And it was, you know, listen to some, listen to some dudes that have been around for a long time that have, uh, you know, had a lot of good information, but it was. I, I think just uh, us, Coach Sprinkle and I getting to do that together was, you know, it was just, it was fun for us and kind of like, a, you know, I don't know if it was an arrival moment, but it was just like, hey, like, all right, like, you know, we did all right for ourselves. Like, yeah. <laughs> make a terrible decision hiring me as an, uh, an assistant, right. you know. <laughs> well, I appreciate so, your yeah, modesty, was- man. Uh, you, you definitely have done a tremendous job there. You know, I, I, like I said, I remember my relationship with Drinkle. He was always bragging on, on you guys, man, and, and how good of a staff that he had. And, um, you know, you, def- you guys have all definitely pro- proven it over the years, man. So, uh, you know, wishing you the best of luck. I uh, would love for you to share your Twitter handle if you if you got one, so uh, guys can kind of keep up with your journey and ask you any questions if they have uh, any. It's uh, it's at Myers M Y E R S underscore K W U. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitter, my email is Matthew dot Myers M Y R S at K W U dot E D U. So you know, if anyone wants to hit me up, um, you know, we're going to clinic today with some uh, with a some analytics. Uh, clinicing up today, so I'm going to get to learn about analytics today. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, but yeah, if anyone wants to hit us up, like I know uh, Coach Bauer, our OC, you know, would like to get with whoever it is. You know, we've been mixing up with some high school staff here recently. Um, you know, just kind of, I'd like to pick high school staff's brains a little bit just because they're, like, they got to, they're relaying information to, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old dudes and it's, uh, and their teachers a lot. So, yeah. you know, yeah, and, and they can't pick, and they can't pick who they want on the roster. So yeah, they, uh, those guys, those guys know a ton, man. Well, that's awesome, yeah. coach. We'll make sure to share your uh, your 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 email and, and Twitter in our show notes to make it easy for guys to find that. I do appreciate yeah. your time, coach. Wishing you the best uh, summer here, and and as, as you roll into the fall, wishing you the best of luck. Okay. Absolutely, I appreciate you. All right, thanks, coach. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to AFCAPodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at AFCA.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at we are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. 
It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.